Hey, good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up, guys. Wake up. Okay, so here we are. It is Friday. Oh, my goodness. It is already week number seven in the NFL. I can't believe how fast the season is literally flying by. But, you know, things change rapidly in football. Um, anybody who's given up on the Cowboys at 3-3, three and three, you just don't know football. You can look around the NFL and things change in a heartbeat. And at 3-3, three and three, you're right in the middle of things. You got to understand that you look around and you say, oh, well, you know, uh, Seattle's doing great. New Orleans is doing great. You know, uh, Carolina is doing great. Well, Carolina and New Orleans, they're going to be battering and bruising each other. The 49ers and the Rams, I'm in the, uh, sorry, 49ers and Seattle, they're going to be battering each other. And everybody that's in the North, the Vikings, the Lions, the Packers, they're going to be battling each other. So some of these teams are going to be coming back down to earth. Some of these teams are going to be having some injuries. Some of these teams are going to be getting healthy. And sometimes things just happen. We recall what happened last year when we started out 3-5. and five, And we got Amari Cooper, and that made all the difference in the world. We turned it around. Things looked pretty, pretty dark at that point. At 3-5, and five, we were at the same position we are right now. Where they were calling for Jason Garrett's head. Fire the offensive coordinator, replace Dak, and it was just like literally everything that you could imagine was set. But the team turned it around. Now last night, if you watch the Kansas City game, Pat Mahomes, who last year's MVP was looking pretty good for this year's MVP, ends up dislocating his kneecap. Best case scenario when they do the MRI is there's no structural damage and he's out three weeks. Now, their defense stepped up last night and played lights out, got nine sacks. You just don't know what you don't know. And we have ten games. Ten games to go. So it's not time to panic just yet. Now, this is an opportunity. This game. This game is more important than anything else that you've done this year. This game gives you a three to no, excuse me, three wins in the division with zero losses. This win keeps you in first place. This win gets the ship righted. This win has you feeling good going into a bye week where you can heal up and get ready for a push. With a loss, you look at having a bad taste in your mouth for the next two weeks. You look in possibly maybe making a coaching change. You look in at four and three and looking up at everybody else. This game is key. And this is all hands on deck. And for both teams, it's really the same thing. What I just said goes for Philly. Because both of these teams, regardless of how the Eagle fans are feeling good about themselves and all that, they're just as beat up as we are. Their tackle, Jason Peters, he might not play. They may end up having a, a rookie starting for him. Deshaun Jackson, he's been MIA with a, a abdominal strain, I believe. Maybe might play. And that's where we are with Amari Cooper. He, maybe he might play. And we have Lyle Collins and Tyron Smith. Both of those guys made a surprise appearance yesterday in helmets and shoulder pads at practice. And were limited. We can keep our fingers crossed that they are healthy enough to go on Sunday and are effective and don't hurt themselves anymore going into the bye week. But they sense the urgency of this game and how important it is. And that's why all hands are trying to do everything they can. You've got to absolutely positively love that. Now make no mistake about it. We've had some disappointing games from guys that we expect a lot more from doing my live stream yesterday we're doing something a little new we're doing a uh, drive time live stream five around five o'clock if i'm home for work um just to kind of get up with the news and everything else um 
and I was talking about Demarcus Lawrence has got nine tackles and two and a half sacks. And the guy went through and said, "Oh, well, you know, you you know, you you watch the film. He's getting double and triple teamed. Yeah, I know he is. I know he is. But so is Khalil Mack. So is every premier pass rusher. So is Calais Campbell. But if you want to be the man, you got to play like the man. And right now, we're not getting that same production that we had before. I know he's getting more attention." But he's got to do better than that. We need that to be better than that. The middle of our defense has got to do better. We're soft up the middle lately. Uh, you know, um, Millie Collins has played really well, and this is probably the best year of his season. But we still have not been able to get the push. And I think schematically that teams have caught up to our stunting defense, and we keep getting caught in stunts in these running plays. But I'll talk about that at another point. Zeke Elliott has averaged under four yards a carry. The last three games, we got to get production from him, and we got to get this offensive line solid again, where we can run the ball. And it goes back to coaching as well. For some reason, we got away from play action, almost forty percent the first three games to fifteen percent the last three. So collectively, if this team does just, it doesn't have to be major things. If Zeke Elliott runs a half a yard more per carry, if the offensive line can hold up for a half a second longer, if the pass rush can get there a half a second quicker, all these little things together add up to a lot. Now make no mistake about it. Like I said, Eagles, they lost last week too to Minnesota. In fact, their secondary is terrible. I mean, it is terrible. They're tough against the run, but that's secondary you can throw on. And I look for the Cowboys to definitely attack downfield, way downfield with this. And, of course, it's a division game. And division games always go down to the wire. And it's just a matter of who makes the least mistakes. Now, the biggest thing is the Dallas Cowboys have to come out with a sense of urgency. They have to come out and play to start the game. We can't wait till the second half. Let's listen to a Dak Prescott interview from uh, yesterday. who's reiterating that sense of urgency. You want to be at the team? Yeah, I man, you can't, uh, can't ask for anything better than this. Obviously, I uh, got Philly coming in, in division rival. Uh, winner, winner holds first place of division uh, early in the early in the season, and especially where we are, uh, where we are with our record three and three, uh, still to be, uh, to have this chance to be in this position for a game like this early. Um, we're excited for it. Where's Jason been this week? There's been so much talk about his job and, and, and his situation, whether you're on the hot seat or not. Uh, how has he been, and what do you think about all those comments? Yeah, it's the same guy. Uh, he's been the same guy through and through, and he always will be. Uh, credit it, credit him to that, um, but that's what you expect. Uh, guy's a professional um, and always that way. Uh, knows how to lead a team, uh, and I've said it before. We all got his back in this locker room. Uh, yeah, I mean, we just... Yeah, it's been very frustrating. Uh, as you said, when, when our back's against the walls and we got to get going, we got to score points, we just somehow we do. So um, we got to figure that out and play with that same mentality, that same urgency uh, from the first play of the game. And we do that, uh, we'll put ourselves in good position uh, for these games moving forward. Can you talk about the mindset of this team? Because we just talked to first with Charles, we talked to Jason earlier. I was just seeing some of the players. Obviously, you guys are disappointed, but it doesn't seem like people are down. No, not down at all. I mean, it's an early, early, early in the season. A lot of football to be played. We know the, the team we have. We know the men that we have. Um, if, you're, if you're down or if you got a hangover from what happened last week, uh, we're only going to put ourselves in a hole uh, for this game that we have Sunday. So, as I said, we're, we're excited for this, this chance we get to play in a game that means this much early um, and against a team like this. Uh, we're excited for it, and we, we like our chances. A lot, a lot of guys talked Sunday about just the lack of execution on the game. What do you think that's improved? Is that just the mental Yeah, I think it is. I think it's the mental thing. I think it's maybe the sum – some way guys preparing or uh, maybe they need to prepare a little bit more, a little bit here and there, but all fixable things. Um, but we've done a good job preparing this week and it's about moving forward. What ideas do you have about hitting off the 
I mean, it starts with the preparation. Uh, it starts with the way that we, we prepare all week long. Uh, started yesterday, started really before then. Had a great day today. We'll continue to have great days throughout the week. Uh, and just allowing the way we practice to carry over to the game. Uh, we've got to make it harder at practice, which we've done. Uh, and then the game is easier. So it's just guys taking that, having that mindset about the way that they practice, the way that they approach anything. Uh, and it'll pay off come the game. It's not as simple as putting the third quarter clock up in, in the first quarter. And let, you right. let you guys miss the third quarter, not the first quarter. Yeah, we might need to trigger ourselves, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but as I said, it, it, it's a mindset, it's a mentality, uh, and it starts there. Um, so if we've got to we've got to go in the game saying, "Hey, we're down 14." We got to tell ourselves that. That's what we'll do. But uh, we'll start off faster. Guys, when you have season, you guys last week against the Jets, obviously stayed in the game. How are you feeling, and how hard is it to not have your eyes go down to the fact that we're up? Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, you can't. I mean, if I do that, I'm going to miss what's happening on the back end. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's part of it. It's part of the game of football. Sometimes you get hit, sometimes you don't. I mean, you leave some games, you never even touch the ground, and you leave some games like that. Uh, it's part of playing the position. Um, I trust those guys up front. I know they'll keep fighting their tails off. Obviously, they're not trying to let that happen, uh, and I know they're not proud of it when it does happen, but uh, get up, shake it off, and just keep moving on, knowing that they're going to they're gonna get the job done. Last season, you guys kind of struggled without before Amari came here offensively. When he comes, you guys were much better. Now, last week without him, you kind of struggled a little bit. How do you guys make sure – if he's not able to go, that you can kind of still produce the way that you guys have when he's been in the way. Yeah, I mean, guys got to step up. Guys got to step up and take advantage of an opportunity. It um, doesn't matter if uh, one guy's out or not. Uh, you point to last week, it was, it was more than just him. So uh, to say that, I think that's unfair and given uh, lack of credit to those other guys that were out, uh, to say the least. But um, just guys got to step up. And we've got the right guys that want to do that, that are asking for those opportunities, uh, and they will. When you have to was it to see Will and Tyron back at practice? One more time. Yeah, it was great. I looked over, saw them doing drills. Uh, as me and the quarterback joke, they look good enough to me. So uh, <laughs> uh, definitely very encouraging. Though. <laughs> when you have two starting receivers injured and both your tackles, what do you, as the quarterback and leader of this team, do to try and help make those other guys ready? Yeah, I mean it's tough when when some of them are game time decision, right? You don't have a lot of time to go over there and talk to a guy or or try to get a guy going. You got to hope you prepared the right way. Um, but when you do have that time, you just got to let them know, hey, I know you're with me. I've got you. If you've got any questions, just ask me. But we got to play fast. As I said, take advantage of the opportunity. Uh, we've got a lot of young guys that, that are. Okay. Yeah, another guy, I mean, took advantage of the opportunities. Went out there, made some catches, some big third down catches, staying with that first one uh, after kind of tipped it up. Uh, just a guy that, that wants to contribute to this team any way he can, whether it's special teams, whether it's on offense, whether if, it, if it's at practice being a show team guy. Uh, and, and guys like him are the reason that this whole thing will uh, get going. If I heard you correctly, you said you practiced harder this week so that the game would seem easier. Have you just been in terms of intensity, or did you do something? Uh, I mean, right? I think it's more individual, uh, individualized. I mean, I always practice hard. I mean, that's just the way I go. And I'm saying I think uh, more individuals need to do that. And that's what I said just from just from the outlook of it, just from my eye, uh, uh, I think they did. Michael told us this week, he, when, after Doug Peterson made some comments, he said Dak always tells us that if we need a coach or someone else to motivate us, we shouldn't be here in the first place. What are some of the other messages you've been giving your teammates this week? Uh, I mean, it depends. Um, that, that was one I think I gave last week or something like that. Uh, but it just depends. I mean, right now it's about focusing on ourselves, like how much this, how much does it uh, a big time game to play a division rival, uh, somebody that we're very familiar with, know they're familiar with us. Um, if you can't bring your best for this game and if you can't prepare your best each and every day, uh, so, yeah, as I say, something, something's wrong with you. Uh, so I know I am, I know a bunch of these guys are, uh, and we'll, we'll be ready to go through Sunday. It doesn't hurt to have that extra, I guess, kerosene on the fire to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying I don't motivate them. Just, uh, you just always got something. <laughs> no, nah, I went to. I'm just talking about what Peterson, whatever somebody said, because you use. Your draft position and stuff oh. is, is, is motivation for yourself. So anything external on top of that helps as well. I mean, sure, but uh, a guy saying that, I mean, I hope he would say that. Uh, I wouldn't want him to be coaching me if he wouldn't say that. Uh, so just because he voiced it doesn't mean that's not what he's thinking. Yeah. And just because we're not voicing it doesn't mean that we don't have our own thoughts and opinions how this game's going to go. Yeah. So uh, it's words. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm a, I'm a quick, a short memory guy. Uh, Hopefully. Had some success last last time we played these guys, putting the ball in there, sure, a few turnovers. Um, but those things those things kind of happen. Um, yeah, I don't have an answer for you there. How are you better suited for tomorrow to play this week compared to you were the first six weeks of last year? 
I mean, I think it's the game plan more than it is me personally or, or a few guys. How do they, how do they prepare? I think it's the game plan. What do we go in? How, what plays are we putting in? Um, and, and Kellen them done a good job uh, with the plan with and or uh, plan without him. You embrace the, the next man up philosophy, but when when you have key offensive guys out, do you have to guard against trying to do too much to compensate? And if you do, is that something you have to constantly remind yourself? Uh, yeah, sure. It may take a little reminder here and there, um, but it's mm -hmm. about trusting those other guys, trusting those guys that are come, they're going to come in, trust that they're prepared, trust they're going to they're going to make the plays when they're one on ones uh, and get the job done. I mean, they're NFL guys too. Uh, sure, we're talking about some elite players being out, um, but as I said, it's just an opportunity and a space for me to go in there, if I'm a young guy, and show how good I am, and show that I can get the job done too. One, one storyline of this rivalry the last several years has, of course, been you and Carson Wentz. I know you're a team guy, but how do you view that in terms of y'all coming in the league at the same time, same division? And Yes, yes. Some are always fun. Some will be able to always, every matchup, look back and say, uh, "What's our record against each other?" Or this versus that. Uh, some that will always be cool to uh, track. Um, a guy that's done really, really well in his career. Um, credit him for what he's doing and uh, what he's done. Um, but uh, like our chances this Sunday. Do you want anything extra this week to recover from the bumps and bruises from last week? No, I mean I've got a very detailed uh, way I go about my recovery each and every week. Nothing changes. Uh, it's done its job up to this point. Yeah, appreciate that. I think it's great. Uh, I know we were we were specified and um, we were locked in on breast cancer there for a while. So, I mean, I think it's important that now we've broadened out and we're, we're covering everything. Uh, we're covering all these cancers and terminal illnesses that uh, that are that are affecting each and every, are affecting somebody that uh, that we love. And everybody here, uh, everybody in this world knows somebody um, that they're definitely uh, personally, that the, per, the cancer personally caused a tragedy too. Um, so. Uh, it's great that we're bringing awareness. Uh, now we just have to come, to come together, continue to do that. It takes more than one. It takes more than a few. Uh, it takes all of us to beat something like this. All right. So that's what we got, guys. That's our quarterback. You know, he said he didn't have to do anything extra to get over the bumps and bruises, and he did get lit up. The officials definitely let the defensive line play, and um, I'm amazed that he is still upright. But like I was saying, that here's the thing. And this is the problem that I'm hoping will be better this week because last week we didn't know Amari Cooper wasn't going to be there. You know, the next man up didn't really know he was going to be playing in big part of the game plan. Um, that this week we've had a chance to prepare guys to fill in. Now we may get the bonus of getting Amari Cooper back, which would be a pleasant surprise. But we saw, in worrying about him not really being part of the game plan, he is such a tactician and he is so precise with his routes. There's not a whole lot of changes or a whole lot of practice that the two of them need to have to be effective. And make no mistake about it, the Eagles secondary, they have given up more 100-yard receivers. They have given up more 30-plus yard TD passes than anyone, and I mean anyone in the NFL. So it's time to strap on and get ready to go downfield. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, I got to get to my day job. Be sure to tune in tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, for the Joe Boo Sports live stream at 9 o'clock. We'll see you there.